Ladies and gentlemen, as we continue, it's my honor to introduce to you this Christmas, Dr. John Lennox, here on One Special Christmas. Imagine you have invited guests to a Christmas dinner, say, your guests eat the food with relish, they talk to each other animatedly, but they ignore you completely. Even when you bring in a magnificent dessert, they still say nothing. You press them and finally one of them turns to you and says, the food is magnificent, the music's beautiful, but as for you, we are not the least bit interested in you. In fact, some of us are not even sure that you exist, and they leave without a word of thanks. That's impossible, you say. But just think, that may be precisely how many of us have treated God this past year. We've taken his gifts of health, ability, job, home, food, family and friends, but we've never stopped to acknowledge or thank him for them. We have accepted the gifts, but rejected the giver. Unto us a son is given, wrote Isaiah, words immortalized in Handel's magnificent oratorio, The Messiah. The important thing here is this. Please notice it. The gift is the giver. And so we cannot reject the gift without rejecting the giver. And he is the saviour of the world. There's much good in the world, but there's also much evil, poverty, suffering, violence, war, exploitation, slavery, fear, discrimination and abuse. And who of us would dare suggest that there's nothing from which we need to be saved? Anger, lovelessness, destructive desires, egocentricity, greed, spite, envy, dishonesty, hypocrisy and hatred, to name but a few. Surely, we would agree with G.K. Chesterton who, in response to a question in the Times, what is wrong with the world, wrote to the editor, Dear Sir, I am yours faithfully, G.K. Chesterton. Are we therefore doomed to live in a world like Narnia, in which it is always winter, never Christmas? No, because Christmas has indeed come. Into our world God speaks a message full of hope. You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. How's that to be done? Not you'd be glad to know by suggesting another round of unrealistic New Year's resolutions. Moral codes are very important, but they cannot either forgive us or empower us to live as we know we ought to live. They can certainly tell us how we should live. They can measure just how far we fall short of God's standards and even our own standards. A thermometer measures our temperature. It can tell us we are ill and need a doctor, but it cannot cure us. Similarly, God's law shows us that we are sinful and points us to a spiritual doctor. I emphasize we cannot merit God's salvation. People find this so difficult to grasp, especially since so much in human experience is merit-based, our exam results, our jobs, promotions, etc. God's salvation is not based on our merit, but on his love for us in Christ who can forgive because he died for us. The Archbishop of Canterbury once said in an Easter sermon, the cross is the great point at which the suffering and sorrow, torture, trial and sin and yuck of the world ends up on God's shoulders out of love for us. And when we receive Christ, he then enables us to live in the power of his resurrection. Yet, it will be said by some, including the late Christopher Hitchens, that it makes no moral sense for one man to give himself for another's sins. There's force to that objection, if the man is merely a man, but Jesus was never only a man. He was God incarnate, and because he's both God and man, he can offer us salvation as a gift, forgiveness, peace with God, new life and hope, because he died for us as the Son of God. But like all gifts, it has to be received, in this case by the deliberate and willing act of repentance and trust in Christ as Saviour and Lord. John Newton's words say it all. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. 
Many people, especially in the great cities of the world, are feeling lost and blind at this Christmas time. They may well be successful in the eyes of others, but they have not yet found a story big enough to bring a sense of fulfillment and purpose into their lives. The Christmas story is big enough to do just that, because it is historical, not fiction. It's real and not legend, because at its heart is the incarnation of God in Jesus, who came to live, die and rise again for our salvation. That salvation is the biggest gift you can ever receive, but you have to receive it. Let me leave you with the fact that you can receive it this very Christmas if you have not already done so already. Listen to the words of the Gospel of John, chapter 1. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. We are born into this world as creatures of God. By responding to the Christmas story and opening our hearts, wills and lives to repent of the mess we've made of our own lives and the lives of others and trusting Christ as Saviour, we can become something we never were before children of God. May I wish you that peace with God and certainty of salvation in Christ this Christmas. In the words of what has in the last few years become a much loved hymn around the world, in Christ alone, no guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. He holds a PhD in two doctors of science and philosophy. Dr. John Lennox, a very special Christmas greeting for you this night on one special Christmas on That Kevin Show. Coming right back. Kevin Show.